Well, if our previous lesson was about arithmetic series, in other words, summing up arithmetic sequences, um, then the next logical thing for us to talk about would be geometric series. In other words, taking a geometric sequence, which is to say something like 2, oops, which is to say something like 2, negative 6, positive 18, negative 54. In other words, something where you're multiplying by a common ratio, you're multiplying by the same number over and over and over again. And we're looking at taking something like that and adding up terms. Um, there are going to be two different formulas here. One of them is the sum of a finite geometric series. So if you're adding up a limited, a finite number of these things, then S sub n, the nth partial sum, we've talked about that before, the sum of the first n terms, will be this. U1, that's the first term, times 1 minus the common ratio to the nth power, divided by 1 minus the common ratio. It may not be the nicest formula in the world to memorize, but there it is. Um, in this lesson, I'm actually not going to be talking about those ones. I'm actually going to start, strangely enough, by talking and doing examples of infinite geometric series, um, largely because the formula is just so much simpler. The formula for an infinite geometric series is that S equals U1 over 1 minus R. You might, might notice in this one, it, it, you know, it looks like N doesn't matter. And the reason is, remember what N represents. N here represents how many terms you're adding together. Well, that's because it's finite. If anything, this would be like S sub infinity, right? So the idea is you can sum up an infinite geometric series using this formula, but there is a restriction. This formula only applies if the absolute value of R is less than 1. In other words, you know, i.e., that negative 1 is less than R is less than 1. So again, this is really what I'm going to be focusing our attention on today. We're going to be doing examples of these infinite geometric series. I, I do want to take a minute to talk about why this limitation should make sense. All right? What this says is it basically says that your common ratio needs to be small. Like imagine if you tried to take this geometric sequence up here and tried to add it forever. You know, you did 2 plus negative 6 plus 18 plus negative 54 plus you know, 162. Notice those numbers just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If I keep doing that forever, nothing nice is ever going to come of this. Right? The idea with an infinite geometric series is that if the terms are getting smaller, and I know this is kind of crazy, but if the terms are getting smaller, it turns out that that thing can actually, in an infinite sense, add up to something. Um, and before I use that formula, I actually kind of want to show you guys an example of of how that can even possibly be true, and I'm going to do that with a little bit of a diagram, so stay tuned for that. Alright, so this is really neat stuff. I'm going to try and keep it short, but, but I want to convince you of the idea that if you add up things forever, it can still potentially like, add up to something that can still be equal to something. So, I want you to consider this infinite geometric series. This series that says 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth plus 1 thirty second. Some people would argue that, that this whole thing has to add up to infinity, and they would say that because, well, if I just keep adding things forever and ever and ever, this number is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think I can actually convince you of the fact that this is equal to 1. If you were to add this up forever, like forever, you would get 1. And I can show you this with a picture, right? Imagine that I had a box. Here's a box. And let's say that I decided to shade in half of the box. So here I am, I shade in half of the box. Right? Great. Then I decide I'm going to go and shade in one-fourth of the box. Think about one, what one-fourth is. One-fourth is half of what I have left. So if I shade in one-fourth of the box, that means I'm shading in this. Right? Then after that, I decide I'm going to shade in one-eighth of the box. Well, that again is times one-half of the one-fourth that's left. So I'll shade in one-eighth of the box. Then if I shade in one-sixteenth of the box, it's half of what's left. If I shade in one-thirty-second, it's half of what's left. The idea is if I continue this process, I mean, I, I mean, heck, I can continue this infinitely, I will never break out of this box. In fact, all that's going to happen is I'm just going to keep filling in this box. And at some point, you know, my, my stylus here isn't going to be able to write finely enough for me to keep doing this. But the idea is, 
if I keep doing this infinitely far, what will I eventually do? I will eventually fill up one entire box. We had said initially that this was going to be half of the box, and so at the end of the thing, the whole thing will add up to one. So I hope this little illustration at least convinces you of the idea that it's possible for us to add things up infinitely and, and see them adding up to something. By the way, I should mention, we could also use the formula for this. The formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series is that the sum is the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. In this case, that would be the first term of 1 half over 1 minus the common ratio, which was also 1 half. That means s is 1 half over 1 half, which means s is 1. So you can be convinced of it either with my really, really nice, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty drawing. I mean, let's be honest. Um, or maybe it's just kind. <laughs> we can also see it with a formula. We can see that it adds up to 1. Okay. I have two more examples for us uh, that are just sort of going to be direct uses of, of this formula, and we'll see this in action. So first, you know, find the sum of the infinite geometric series whose first three terms are 18, negative 6, and 2. I, I really think it should be reasonable for you guys to, to get this. As soon as you see sum of the infinite geometric series, you should immediately be thinking about how to use this formula. So pause the video, identify what these variables are that you need, work it out, and get the answer. So hopefully you've done that. Hopefully you recognize, hey, I know the first term here is 18. And the common ratio, they didn't give us the common ratio, but we know that if we take the second term and divide it by the first term, we will get negative one-third, which is the common ratio. You could also have done the third term divided by the second term. You're always just putting one term ov over the one before it. Right? In both these cases, you get a common ratio of negative one-third. So if I plug this stuff in, my first term is 18. I have 1 minus negative 1 third. In other words, I have 18 over 4 thirds. And, and this should be a clear thing, but just in case it's not clear to you guys here, the, the way that you deal with this is multiply top and bottom by the reciprocal of the denominator. Right? Doing that causes the denominator to be 1 which means you're going to end up with just 18 times 3 fourths, which is uh, 54 fourths, which is 27 halves. So there you go. That is the sum of this infinite geometric series. If you take this thing that starts 18, negative 6, 2, and add it up infinitely, it'll add up to 27 over 2. So we have one more example. Um, consider a geometric, and this one's a little bit weirder, um, consider a geometric sequence for which two successive terms are 20 ninths and 40 twenty sevenths. If the infinite sum of the sequence is 15, find the first term of the sequence. Um, again, you know, we see geometric, we see infinite sum, immediately that means you're using this formula. And, and they're really never going to trick you about that on the IB exam. If, if you see infinite geometric in the same problem, it's going to be this formula, right? So we need to know what the sum is, we know we need to know what the first term is, we need to know what the common ratio is, right? Well, we're told that, and actually before I go through the problem, if you're feeling up to it, pause the video, try it out, it's, it's really not that bad. If you can identify what you already know, you should be able to find out what you're missing and solve the problem, right? So they tell us here, if the infinite sum is 15, hey, that's us, that's them telling us that 15 is what the infinite sum is. They want you to find the first term. Well, gosh, that means you're going to leave the u1 in there. 1 minus, if I'm going to solve this, I'm going to have to get the common ratio. How in the world can we ever figure out what the common ratio is? Well, I mentioned the previous problem, that if you take one term and divide by the term that came before it, you can always get the common ratio. So if only we had two terms that were in a row, you know, like, for instance, two successive terms, we totally have that. If we just write 40 over 27 over 20 over 9, we can simplify that thing and find out what the common ratio is. Um, if you haven't paused the video so far, definitely do it here. How would you simplify that thing? I, I mentioned the secret in the previous, uh, in the previous example, um, so, so work that out. Hopefully what you remember is that you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, 9 twentieths. Right? So when you do that, the denominator turns into 1. In the numerator, so you've got 
40 over 27 times 9 over 20. And in this case, I, I sort of made it cancel out nicely. You've got 2 here and 3 here, so your common ratio is 2 thirds. Okay, so here we go. I've got 15 equals u1 over 1 third. If I want to solve for u1, I just multiply both sides of this problem by 1 third. And I'm going to end up getting that 5 is the first term of this sequence. Okay. So these are pretty straightforward, pretty simple examples of using this infinite geometric series formula. Um, the examples I have in the, in the upcoming video are going to be a little more challenging, um, so make sure you've got some brain space for those.